That blackness hides a stark truth. There's no atmosphere on the moon, only a life-sucking vacuum. Humans wouldn't survive here more than a few minutes without one of the most complicated pieces of technology ever devised, the spacesuit. Bob, what do you think? Can I read a gravimeter? Nothing less than a wearable miniature spaceship, the suit must deliver air to breathe, warmth in the shade, and cooling in the sun. The Apollo suits of the 1960s were rigid, bulky, and only good for a few days. So, step six of the new mission is to devise a spacesuit that can last for several months and is easier and more flexible to move in. That's a unique challenge because it's like inflating your tire. The more air you add into the spacesuit, the much more stiff it becomes and much more difficult it is to move. So that's a definitely a design challenge that we have to overcome. Even the gloves are inflated with air, making it hard to bend your fingers. Oh, man. You're talking about very stiff, unforgiving gloves. And not only do they wear your forearm muscles out very quickly, but it can also cause trauma in various parts of the hand. And we have to do much better with the next uh, generation of spacesuits. And figure out a better way to put them on. Unlike Apollo, the next generation of astronauts going to the moon will be able to slip easily into the back of their spacesuits. This will cut prep time for a spacewalk from several hours to just 30 minutes. But how well will this new spacesuit design work in the moon's reduced gravity? Well, it's, it's, it's well balanced and stable, so you're not moving things around. Okay. To find out, astronaut Mike Gernhardt uses a special device. This test we're doing is aimed at understanding the effects of center of gravity on human performance in lunar gravity. And so what you see here is a pogo system, which is a pneumatic cylinder that actually offloads your weight. So we can make you weigh the same as you would on the moon. With Pogo's help, astronauts can moonwalk, first in regular clothes, then wearing a spacesuit weighing several hundred kilos. An interesting observation we've made is that while you're walking slow in a suit on the moon, the, the metabolic cost is much more than walking on Earth, even though you don't weigh as much. And as you go faster and faster, above about five miles an hour on the moon, it becomes easier to run on the moon than to run on Earth. The Apollo suit seemed to work well at first in the moon's reduced gravity, just one sixth of our own. I'm getting it right now. But they turned out to be top-heavy. What our data is suggesting now is that uh, we, we definitely want to get a center of gravity that's close to our own. A punctured suit could have been lethal. Luckily, it didn't happen. The guys were falling down a lot, actually. We analyzed the videotapes, and 2 3% of the time, they were either falling down or getting back up. But the falls caused another problem. And so their suits got very dusty and dirty, and then they didn't have an airlock, so they had to climb back into the lander, and they got all that dust all over the lander. Moon dust is deceptive. It preserves a footprint like fine powder. But under the microscope, you can see it's made of particles as jagged as glass. Worse still, it's statically charged, clinging to virtually everything. A deadly menace to equipment, machines, and even people. So, yeah, we don't want to breathe dust. No question about it. What do we do about it? Well, the primary source of dust in a habitat would be the suit. Leave the suit outside. But for astronauts to leave suits and dangerous dust outside requires step seven, a permanent outpost. To build that, they'll need supplies, lots of them. Delivering them is another job for the Altair lander, which flies unmanned when carrying cargo. 
These cargo flights deliver the vehicles and materials needed to set up the lunar outpost. NASA is already testing the prototype lunar rover that will be used to transport construction materials. But the outpost itself is still a work in progress. Engineers are evaluating many different types of habitat design. We've looked at what if we had just one large module that had was maybe 500 cubic uh, feet of, of space to house four, four astronauts. Or if we had smaller tube type modules to build a larger facility. If something should happen to one module, you could quarantine it off and the crew could stay safe in the other modules. The big concern is weight. Habitation specialist Robert Howard evaluates a design that's both light and compact. We're now inside the inflatable torus. This is a mock-up of one of the systems that the Lunar Surface Systems Project is considering for, for living on the moon. If you notice the curved outer wall and the beams that represent an aluminum core, you can kind of think of this as an inflatable donut. When complete, the habitat would look something like this. A lot of people wonder, why are we looking at inflatables? They think of these as just big balloons, and why do we want to play with balloons? It's out to be made from a durable Kevlar-like fabric. It's extremely rigid, it's stronger than aluminum once it's inflated, and it's designed to be able to compress into a small area, but yet expand into a large volume once deployed on the surface. It'll take several hours for the habitat to inflate to its full size. It expands outwards from a central core containing the electrical and life support systems. Along the curved outer wall sit storage units, as well as work and lab stations. An identical adjoining unit houses the crew's living and sleeping quarters. Entrances are fitted with airlocks and magnetic filters to keep out dust. But engineers have an even more lethal lunar hazard to contend with. Radiation. Cosmic rays traveling from distant parts of the solar system constantly bombard the moon. And the sun unleashes streams of highly charged particles during sporadic eruptions called solar flares. You go up there with even a spacesuit and, you know, if there's a solar flare, you could be dead. During their few days on the moon between 1969 and 1972, the Apollo astronauts suffered no ill effects from radiation. But many believe they dodged a bullet, something residents staying several months can't count on. We have the ability to bury those outposts in lunar regolith, shielding, radiation shielding. A jacket filled with regolith, the troublesome lunar dust, forms a dense barrier which absorbs cosmic rays while inside a water wall shields astronauts from the higher energy radiation periodically produced by the Sun so they'll go inside inside the protective confines of the water wall and there they'll wait out the storm just kind of like a tornado shelter in the Midwest it's now 2024 four years since humans returned to the moon. Over multiple missions, the lunar outpost has gradually grown in size, allowing its occupants to live and conduct scientific experiments for up to six months at a time. But they're still totally dependent on regular cargo shipments from Earth for all their supplies. If the outpost is to survive, they must find a way to begin producing their own oxygen, water and other basic necessities.